name is Matt, welcome to Shop, and today we're going to be talking about back pressure. So, someone did ask, can you explain to me, Matt, um, why changing an exhaust can make a bike go lean? Well, it can actually go both ways, lean or rich, but... Um, the one that we're worried about is going lean because your engine starts to heat up and all sorts of horrible things start to happen. Um, if you're slightly rich, you don't really notice the fact that you, you might bog down a bit if you go far too much. But generally, you don't notice that much. You might be down slightly on power, but with some of these machines, you can hardly fucking tell. So, what's the crack? So, you've all, surely you've all heard of exhaust scavenging. But a lot of people don't seem to understand what that actually means. So let's just do a simple cylinder head arrangement like this. And then let's just put a piston in there. Like so, like we usually do. Like this. So let's just imagine our intake is closed, our intake valve is closed, and for simplicity, let's just omit the exhaust valve. So what's happening here is that we have an exhaust, and the way you can think about this exhaust is a uh, garden hose, you know, with your finger on it or whatever, a nozzle or whatever, right? And in this example, our nozzle is quite small, like so. So what's going to happen is our um, piston is trying to force out the exhaust gases. Now, all the exhaust gases are really, really hot. Unfortunately, that's a bad thing. But they're hot and the most of it's already pissed out. So that's why I've kind of done the piston from here, not from just, say, down here where the piston crown bottom dead centre would be bottom dead centre. This is just to make it blatantly clear what's going on. They've done studies, you know. Right then, so what's happening here is like, um, it's like a car, right? It's like a car jam. So let's just imagine there's three lanes in your exhaust. Right? There's three lanes in your exhaust. And what happens is, is that you know, these three lanes are trying to merge into one. Now, we all understand, you know, we're talking cars here, not bikes. We all understand what happens here. This is fucked, right? That's what's happened here. This is fucked. You try and get all these twats to arrange themselves to get out. This is the exhaust gas volume and its flow, its mass flow rate and stuff like that. But let's just look at it as these cars trying to get out into this single lane, right? And... More cars have been rammed up its ass. Let's call it, I don't know, the Blackwall Tunnel. Fuck, you know, you know, going south, uh, northbound. Fuck's sake, that's a mess. And what happens is, is that your, when, once you know you get towards the top, your piston gets towards the top, your intake valve will open to try and purge with overlap. And because it's a port injection engine, um, this in here, this shit that's rushing in here, is it is fuel and air, right? So this is fuel, air. So this in here has oh I don't draw it, fuck hell. This in here has a pressure. Right, there's our pressure gauge. This has a pressure in here. There are this gas in here has a temperature. It's loitering around. It's on its way out, but it's restricted. Now this exhaust, weirdly enough, is fucked, but it's also the OEM exhaust, right? And what happens is, is that the fuel injector has been programmed or has been tuned with this OEM exhaust in mind. So what happens is, is the amount of fuel it sprays, some of it, some of the fuel, let's just say it's three cars, no, six cars worth of fuel is going to piss out of this exhaust before the exhaust valve closes due to timing, right? We can't think this changes dynamically with RPM range. Let's just imagine it's set. Let's just imagine this engine only did one RPM, 
right? So we're always going to lose this amount of fuel. So what we do is we put 50 cars worth of fuel in, right? 50 cars worth of fuel into this cylinder, knowing we are going to lose six cars, right? So we've got 44 cars and 44 cars with the amount of cylinder volume. So the volume, and let's just say it's a 250cc cylinder, right? Equals a ratio of 13 to one, right? Air fuel mixture ratio. And we're happy with that. We're happy with that because it's slightly on the rich side or whatever. This is what we would call, this is the normal state Right, this is how your bike came from the factory. This is the normal state that this bike should be in. So, what we do, because we're fucking clever, <laughs> or not, <laughs> all right, is we open up this exhaust. Yeah, we get a fucking tonky toy system. Right, like a big bros exhaust system or some shit. Right, <laughs> like this. And our three lane turns into the, I don't know, a big motorway. It won't be the M25, it'll be something even fucking more gargantuan than that. Some fucking giant bloody motorway, right? Where just, there's extra lanes added. So now, this pressure in this system isn't as high because the gases aren't restricted, they can fuck off out. So this pressure's a lot lower. It means that when the exhaust gases flow into it, when the purge comes into here, it fucks off straight back out. And instead of it being six cars, Right, it's 12 cars, so 12 cars piss out, so we're not minus, we're not minus 6, we're minus 12, right? So minus 12 from this gives us 38, so we can scrub that fucking number out, and we can say, well, this is 38, which drops this number from 13 to 1 to just, say, 15.5 to 1, right, because we've got less air, uh, less fuel, sorry because we've lost a lot of that fuel out. Now, some people might say, well, why don't you lose the same equivalent amount of air? And that's because of that's how port injection systems work, right? So getting rid of all of this, what happens is to have good mixture, what they do is they have your intake runner like this, you know what I mean? And then they'll have your valve, fucking something like this. You know, shit drawing, I know. You'll live. You'll all fucking live. Right. And what they do is they spray the back of the valve. And they do this for two reasons. With an injector that sits up wherever it sits down in the throat. Wherever the fuck it sits, it doesn't matter. Sprays the back of the valve and that fuel vaporises. Obviously like that, right? It vaporises. Then as soon as you open this cylinder, as soon as you open that valve, all the air comes rushing in and it comes through the fuel, like the mist, and it pushes it in. So in essence, just imagine that all of this is the volume. Imagine this here, this entire tube is the entire volume. This is fuel rich, so this is fuel heavy. Right, and here there's just no fuel, it's just air. And the overlap is right at the beginning of the intake. So it's at the beginning of the intake stroke. So this fuel rich fucks out of the exhaust, then the door is closed, so access is denied. So you've got, just say, a lot, get rid of all this fuel, this fuel hasn't gone in, this fuel's pissed out. And you're left with this amount of fuel and the air. And the fact of the matter is, is the exhaust system, or the ECU system, doesn't know that you being a bright spark has gone and changed the, has changed the exhaust, has gone and changed the system parameters. Forget back pressure, it's just you have changed the system parameters. And this is the thing, if you start changing anything, right, all this has all been calculated, it's been tested, it's been recalculated, it's been tested to give them the best of everything. Low noise because they can't sell it otherwise, low emissions because they can't sell it otherwise, and then fuel economy, performance, and all the other good shit that you want, right? And to try and remain competitive against fucking Yamaha, Suzuki, whoever, whoever, wherever. You know what I mean? It has been tuned. You know, people keep going about tuning. They've done a shitload of tuning. They've learnt the settings 
and then I've got them. Then, like I say, like Bright Sparks, we turn up and we change it. That's why some systems have the same back pressure. So, um, you might go and get a Delkovic system. Now, a Delkovic system, it's quite simple. They can flow, they can do a, a, a and it's one of the reasons where a floor bench is useful. They can floor bench test one of their exhausts, at the end of the day it's just a fucking tube, they can floor bench test their exhaust system versus the OEM one. And what they can do is they can keep on swapping out bits of tubing until they get the same pressure readings throughout the entire exhaust system as the OEM ones. As soon as they've got those same numbers, they then build an exhaust to them parameters, you know, to them specifications, and then they can say stuff like bolt straight on, don't need a, re a ECU remap. If you're trying to buy from a, a Krapovich, Arrow, Scorpion, you fucking name it, you're trying to buy from these companies, they are trying to squeeze a bit more out, so you're going to need a remap. It's basically that simple. And that's where exhaust back pressure... There's loads of people who say, exhaust back pressure doesn't exist. Two strokes, retards, of course it fucking does. You don't have to have a megaphone. The whole point of an expansion chamber on two-stroke is to amplify that. Think of it as literally exactly like a trombone, the horn on a trombone on a trumpet. It is there to uh, attenuate and basically amplify what you are squeezing down those little thin brass tubes. And exact that's exactly, think about a two-stroke exhaust, it's just two fucking trumpets stuck together, you know. Because it's exactly the same thing. It's pressure waves down piping, down tubing, stuff like that. Hope that makes sense. I hope that answers that question. And I'll see you in a bit.